Well, good morning and welcome to New Thought Talk. I am the Reverend Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in beautiful downtown Madeira. And boy, what I, what I got for you today in the way of a guest is just absolutely phenomenal. Those of you that had a chance to see us uh, towards the end of last year got to see an interview that we did via Skype with uh, Terry McBride. Well, today I've got him in the studio. But before we go to Terry, I want to read a quote to you from The Science of Mind. Ernest Holmes wrote, never limit your view of life by any past experience. The possibility of life is inherent within the capacity to imagine what life is, backed by the power to produce this imagery or divine imagination. It's not a question of failing or succeeding. It is a, simply a question of sticking to an idea until it becomes a tangible reality. The illusion is in the way we look at, all, at things. We have looked at poverty, degradation, and misery until they have assumed gigantic proportions. Now we must look at harmony, happiness, plenty, prosperity, peace, and right action until they appear. And I'm here to tell you today, the fellow that's sitting next to me is a fellow that looked that in the face and said, that's the kind of life I want to live. And so today, my guest is Terry McBride. Welcome to the studio. Gosh, it's great to have you here, Terry. Good to be with you, Steve. I've, I've enjoyed our conversations on the phone. I love that Skype interview, but to be where you're with you live on your show is, is an honor. I'm, I'm really... Uh, well, that, well, that makes me feel good because you've been one of my heroes for a long time. <laughs> you know, Terry, I, 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 he, he is the author of a book that's entitled The Hell I Can't, and we're going to discuss that book, I'm sure, during part of our interview today. But Terry's story is, is so inspiring. And when I was going through seminary, somebody gave me that book, and I, I read that and I went, wow, you know, that, that he came through, that you... You had this life experience, 11 years of your life being owned basically by the medical profession and you not knowing what the next turn of the page was going to give you. It, it, the whole 11 I had a spinal fusion during surgery. My spine got infected with the E. coli bacteria, and this was over 40 years ago. And E. coli is a bad bug now, and it was worse back then. Yes, it was. So for about the first three, four years, I mean, I was immersed in surgery after surgery after surgery. But during that time is when I started to really apply these principles. And so... The whole 11 years, I, I had the infection for 11 years. Mm -hmm. But after three years or four years, I was on track using these tools, and it didn't overwhelm me like it did in the beginning. Yeah. You know, that's a, it's a good lesson to, to, for, for those of you that are watching that have seen my, my show before. Um, oftentimes, people come to, to science of mind. And it's, it's like they think it's some kind of a get-rich-quick scheme, you know, or get-well-quick, that all I have to do is, you know, I say my affirmations, I do a little meditation, I read a little of the book, and tomorrow morning I'm going to get up and be that whole perfect and complete that you talk about. The thing is, it took time. It took you had to you had to be consistent with what you did. You had to apply these principles on an ongoing not just a once in a while basis, but an ongoing continuous basis. Yes. And it unfolded for you over a period of years. And that, that I think, is where so many people in, who are involved in this personal growth or taking charge of their creative mind or whatever that label might be, is they tend to run from one discipline to another. Mm -hmm. So they try it for a couple of days or a week or a month. It doesn't work, so they pick up another discipline and try that. Mm-hmm. And over and over, Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind, right. says that we must own our power. Yeah. Because what creates the reality is our consciousness. Right. And so the challenge is how do I begin to really own that my word is powerful? How do I begin to really own that what I can do in my own consciousness makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just studying it and, and thinking about it. You've got to apply it. Apply it, <clears throat> apply it, apply it. That's right. One of the things Holmes says in, the, in his books is you've got to know, and you've got to know that you know. Yes. And, and that takes it from the intellectual side to a, a personal embodiment of what it is. And th that's where the power is. And, and so people come and say, how do I get to know? Well, it's, 
it's not about just holding your palms up or having your feet flat on the floor, or, mm-hmm. you know, or up and looking up to the left. It's about practice these principles. You get a demonstration mm-hmm. and then acknowledge that what I did made a difference. Right. And then over time, that begins to, to move into a belief that, oh my gosh, if I can make a difference on these things, perhaps I can make a difference on this. And you build that knowledge of, of, uh, of, of what I do mm-hmm. is powerful. Because in the beginning, it's just theory. Right. You know, you've got to, you have to put it into practice. You realize after you've put it into practice and you see that demonstration that you have affected that demonstration that you you are part of the causative factor behind that and then as we as we teach at the level that basically at the level that you own it is the level that it will respond for you so if you get a little you 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 manifest a little you demonstrate a little you go okay i did that now you can say, all right, that's my foundation, and I can build off of that. Yes, you know exactly. And, and that's where, and you're right, that's where people, they lose it. You know, they, they've seen, the, there's movies out that you know, are very inspiring in, in many different ways, but the thing is, people watch these movies and they say, okay, I can go out and I can just, you know, I can make my parking spaces, and it's this wonderful, I got a new park. And the first day comes that they don't make a parking space, and all of a sudden, oh my gosh. Or, you know, they decide that, you know, I make $50 a week and I'm going to manifest $5,000 a week. And it doesn't come. Because I can't embody it. I can't own it. And that's the key. And it's, that's it's, it. It's, it's done as we believe. That's right. And all these principles that, that we study are about how do I create belief. Uh-huh. That's what I love about Science of Mind is... Certainly Sundays are empowering to go to our various centers, mm-hmm. to, to be with our spiritual family, to hear an uplifting message. Right. But where the rubber meets the road is what are you doing Sunday afternoon? What are you doing Monday morning? What are you doing Monday afternoon? How do you apply this on a, on a daily basis? And then when you do get results, do you take credit for it or do you give credit away? Yeah. Oh, it was just luck. Or, oh, it was just coincidence. Yeah. Or, or thank you, spirit. Or, uh, mm-hmm. well, what about the human part that it's done as this human part believes? Believes. And the other aspect is I'm going to make an agreement with God. You know, I'm going to get a dispensation because I know the principle says, you know, I've got to love my brother as I love myself. But, you know, there's this individual over here that I'm just not ready to, you know, and da, 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 I'm going to make an agreement with God. If, if you'll just do for me here, I'll clean this mess up later. It doesn't work that way. Well, now listen, it's done as they would believe. So if I believe if I make an agreement with God, it'll work, then that'll work. But it, it, what Ernest says over and over, and what I love about his teachings is, you do not have to change for the infinite power of the universe to back up your belief systems, it already does. Mm-hmm. That Ernest says that's what Jesus brought to the party. Yeah, that it, it, you don't have to forgive enough, let go enough. Be, you don't have to do any of this. You're already enough. Mm-hmm. The law of, of, of the universe right. already backs up your consciousness. So the game becomes one of then. Therefore, I will learn how to take charge of my consciousness. That's a that's a pretty tall order for most people though terry how do they you know in your experience because you 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 travel around and you're teaching people how do you see that unfold for someone that comes to you and says well mr mcbride that that worked for you but you know i just i just don't know my life is in such chaos what do i do it it, it, so there are several questions in there yeah one of the challenges i think for people even in our movement is that when we use these principles and produce results Mm -hmm. we're taught to give thanks Mm -hmm. instead of feeling thankful Mm -hmm. and 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 there's a tendency to give thanks out there yeah and so so my consciousness who's doing the work and i'm doing my work on my consciousness and then my consciousness creates this new reality Mm -hmm. and then what do we do we give credit to something out there and the consciousness goes well what am i chopped liver yeah and so this this what what we're moving into in the last few hundred years is is stepping up to own the magnificence of the human condition that that truly 
It's like, uh, you know, and I quote Jesus because uh, we can yeah. quote Ernest right back. But Ernest says, know ye not your sons and daughters of the Most High? Right. And what, what one of the challenges that so many people have is they don't own that. They're the adult child of an alcoholic parent. They're the product of a dysfunctional family. Their small self and mm-hmm. self are always leaving them astray. Their ego is always trying to separate them from God. And they have all of these lies about who they are as a human being that prevent them from stepping up and walking on this planet as one having authority. And those lies, we're going to, in the next segment, we're getting ready to cut away to, the, to our first commercial, but when we get into that next segment, those lies... They stay with it, with us at a level that we're not even aware of. And we're going to leave that as the hanging point. We're going to go to our first commercial break, and we'll see you when we come back. Uh, right here in the Tower District and all over the Central Valley, you'll see the Bobby Salazar signs everywhere. Let's bring in Bobby Salazar. Bobby! Hey, how are you? How's it going, man? Good. Real good to, real good to have you back on. Now, uh, a new sponsor of The Buzz, I want to thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, let's, well, I want to get right down to it. What'd you bring? Well, this is our famous uh, party tray. It's our variety tray, we call it. And it has just a little bit of everything. It has uh, little taquitos and burritos and quesadillas and guacamole. And it's one of the, the most popular ones that we sell. It's, uh, you can call in. We can have them ready in like 20 minutes to 30 minutes. You know how busy we are, but, you know, spur of the moment, this is a great deal to, to get for any party, any occasion. For the Super Bowl or any occasion, order a party tray from Bobby Salazar's. Stan Gross of Horn Photo. Are you looking for a camera that takes better pictures than your phone? Why not give Horn Photo a shot? We can show you fantastic cameras from Nikon, Canon, Sony, and GoPro. Your time is valuable, so before you buy from Costco, Best Buy, or the Internet, come see us. We've got great prices and deals, super knowledgeable staff, and we've been selling cameras in Fresno for 76 years. We're in the Bellagio at Blackstone and Knees, or go to hornphoto.com. Fresno's Camera Center. Solar energy is now more affordable than ever. Hi, I'm Ty Simpson, sales manager of the new Bland Solar office here in Clovis. And right now at Bland Solar, we're offering a program with zero down payment. That's right, zero money out of your pocket. This new program is affordable and easy with guaranteed production and no appraisals needed. In fact, your new system can be up and running in as little as four weeks. Bland Solar looks forward to serving the residents of the Central Valley. So call us today at 554-5657. Bland Solar, the Valley's expert in solar. Hi, my name is Bonnie, and I'm a show producer here at CentralValleyTalk.com. We have a lot of great shows that you can share your business with our viewers. I'd love for you to give me a call. My number is 559-289-9687. Are you losing weight drinking coffee? Find out how Javita can change your life, help you lose weight, stay healthy, all while making money doing it. Call now, 246-4895. For all of your real estate needs, call Mike Briggs Properties, 559-486-6758, or check us out at MikeBriggsProperties.com. Watch Tim Teeson live Wednesdays at 3 p.m. right here on CentralValleyTalk.com and on digital channel 33.2. If you missed the live broadcast, we're on every Wednesday night at 11 p.m. on Comcast channel 200 and digital channel 43.5. You don't want to miss this. CentralValleyTalk.com Well, welcome back. This is New Thought Talk. I am the Reverend Steve Walling, and my guest today is author and lecturer Terry McBride. And as we went away to our commercial, we were talking about lies, Terry. You know, that's a, that's a strong statement that, that some of these ideas that, you know, our ego will always separate us from God or, you, you know, you're the adult child, and to call them lies. Mm-hmm. What I'm referring to is Ernest Holmes when he says, there are great people who will tell you you do not have the power to heal. Mm -hmm. There are great spiritual teachers who will tell you you do not have the spiritual capacity to heal. Mm -hmm. And that's where Ernest steps in and says, we need to recognize these thoughts for what they are. They are lies claiming to be the truth. Mm -hmm. And he goes on, he said, there are habits of thought that have been around for thousands of generations and that refuse to give themselves up. Yep. And that's what I'm getting at. The lie of your human condition is not powerful. Your human mind and your human body are not powerful. 
that's the lie I'm talking about. Because the power is there. You know, we talk about there's a power and a presence for good in the universe that is available to you. Well, it's available to you. What's that mean? If you don't, if you don't have access to it, if you can't utilize it in the demonstration of your life experience, your life expression. And that means you, gotta, you, you need to be able to demonstrate. And you've got to know that you can demonstrate. And so you've got to practice it. And, th and that's, you know, we were, when we were, going, we were in the break, we we're talking about this is, this is a practicing philosophy. You know, and, it's, and as you said in the last segment, Sunday afternoon through Sunday morning the following week, what are you doing? You know, if you're just sitting there going, gosh, I wish this would work for me, you can sit there and, gosh, I wish it will work for me forever, and nothing's going to happen. But if you begin to start working on creating and demonstrating and then claim, claim ownership when something manifests in your life that you've been working on, claim, you know, you name it and you claim it, you know. As you believe it will be done unto you, when it's done, you've got to claim the belief. You've got to claim it because this is a skill. It's a skill like learning how to do any other type of skill. If you, if you want to play an instrument, for example, you're not going to pick up a violin and be the first violinist for the local Philharmonic Orchestra. But if you work at it every day, you're going to get better. And when you begin to see that you're making music, with that violin, then it builds enthusiasm and it builds embodiment within yourself. And, and maybe after a while, you might get the fifth seat with the Philharmonic. And if you keep working at it and you hold it, you will possibly get the first seat. But you got to do it. You got to do the work. You got to, the principles of practicing, you know, the skill that you want to learn, you've got to do it. And this is the same way with this philosophy. You have to practice these principles. They're not like a list of things that are written on the wall that we walk by, we read, and they say, okay, I've done my reading for the day, and I move on. In your life experience, what, what you dealt with, you had to work through this, and, and your story, I just, it's an amazing story, um, just working through this day after day. And, and one of the things Ernest Holmes says, you have to be able to look a discordant condition in the eye and see the truth beyond that. And that's what you got to do. <clears throat> Sometimes Ernest Holmes says you got to do this, and he's talking to somebody who's just beginning, and yeah. there is not a snowball's chance in the hot place that people are going to do that. Well, yeah. You start where you are, mm -hmm. one step at a time. Where I first started using these principles, so I'd been reading a lot and, and studying this stuff, but I wasn't applying it. And mm -hmm. then in, in my book, uh, uh, what I get comments about, about people who read the book is it's so real. Mm -hmm. you, didn't, you didn't all of a sudden get it one morning and you were well. Right. I started applying these principles so I wouldn't cry myself to sleep every night. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it didn't work the first night, but I kept at it. And by the third or fourth night, I, what I found was I didn't. And I took credit for that. I wrote it down. This is what I'm going to do. I applied it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I found what I can do can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And then it was, well, maybe, maybe I can make a difference here. So then I wrote it down and applied it here. And when that happened, then I took credit again. I didn't go, oh, thank you out there. I began to say, my consciousness did this. The work that I did for the last two days allowed me to be here, which is what then validated mm -hmm. me stepping up the third day to do it again and the fourth day to do it again. Mm -hmm. Because what Ernest over and over says, we spend way too much time studying and in theory and way too little time in the practical application of these principles. Mm -hmm. You mentioned parking places. Yeah. What I tell people in my workshops is when you create a parking place, take credit for, for it. it. Right. You, you're on your way somewhere and you stop by a garage sale and there, right there on the table, it's something you said yesterday you wanted. Mm -hmm. Take credit that your consciousness created that. Yep. And I go a step further and... My Uncle Larry used to say, if anything good happens within 20 miles of you, take credit for it. So we begin to acknowledge 
what I do makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And as you continue to move down the road, what you, the possibility you can move to is what I do makes the difference. Mm -hmm. That's it. But it's a, it's a step by step thing, and uh, uh, and and I think you can only learn it through the practical application of it. Like you said, yeah. you got to do it. You got to do it, and, and you do. You work it a step at a time. That quote comes from the final conclusion out of the textbook. It says, in conclusion, what the world needs is a spiritual conviction followed by spiritual experience. I would rather see a student of this science prove its principles than to have him repeat all the words of wisdom that have ever been uttered. That's the key. That's it right there. Yeah, to begin know. to apply it and take, and I, again, you know, I, I, I beat this, beat this, is take credit for it. Yeah. Because it's done as you believe. So what we're talking about is how do you create belief? Yeah. That's the key. How do I create consciousness? And daily, and this is what Ernest talks again, again, daily we must consciously choose our position in, in the world. Mm -hmm. That's where we work every day, every day, every day. And the way I teach it to my people that I coach, the Everybody Wins program, is 10 to 15 minutes every day. Not just here. Sometimes you need to be writing it out. So mm -hmm. that's why I said I wrote out. I want to use these principles so I don't cry myself to sleep. So the next day when I'm bombarded with all these things, I can look at my written and say, I'm going to make sure I apply these principles today on this thing I wrote down. you got to begin to write this stuff down because if you're just doing it in your mind, your mind will go like this. Right. And by writing it down, you challenge yourself when the depression begins to seep in when the when the outside world is telling you uh you're going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life you need to get used to that idea let me help you make that transition you got to go back that was the yeah. story of the psychiatrist right. when i was in the hospital when he read letters and said you're never going to come out of this hole right and that's why the name of my book is the hell i can't yeah i mean that's i read that and i went you know and, and of course i didn't know you at the time i went, you know, who the heck is this guy? Man, he's just, he sits there. Now, understand, I come from a background, I was a doc, before I retired, I was a doctor of chiropractic. So I, I have that medical-esque background behind me, and I'm looking at this guy, I'm going, this is powerful that, you know, you can look someone in the medical profession in the face, you know, and say, sorry, guy, I'm not buying your stuff. Exactly. You know? And, and I, I think it's important... To be able to do that, one of the challenges as I've worked with people, you know, for 40 years, is we're taught to look outside of ourselves for the answers. Right. We ask our doctor, what's wrong with us? People have feel bad and they go from doctor to doctor to doctor and doctor to doctor until the do one doctor says, this is what you have. And then they go, oh, now I have, and they have a label for their disease. And then what they do is spend the rest of their life dealing with this label. Right. One of the challenges is beginning to be your own teacher. How do you go inside and learn to listen to your own counsel instead of running to somebody else to find the answers? Because that's the key, is when you become your own teacher and spend those times, like you said, in meditation, mm -hmm. to, to get quiet and then go inside and ask yourself, what do I think I need to do? Right. Because that's where the answer is going to come from. The answer is not going to come from out there, you know. And and we do. We put responsibility outside of ourselves. And and you know, it's 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 a societal teaching. If you're unhappy, somebody somebody is the cause of your unhappiness. But that somebody, no one says, is you. You know, it's somebody outside of you. If you're if you're happy, you're unhappy. If you're successful or unsuccessful, it's because of outside. The economy was good. The economy was bad. That particular field just happened to take off, or whatever. How about maybe you had the consciousness to own your pathway that you chose to walk in this life? We don't talk about that in our society. We don't talk about that because we talk a lot about victimology. We talk about excuse, and that's one of the things that I like so much about what we teach is it takes that off the table. It clears the decks, and, and you know I'll tell people, and I told this to my kids as they were growing up, if you've got an issue and, you, and you're all really upset, 
I said, you need to go talk to the person that's responsible for that issue. And in our house, the biggest mirror in the house is in the bathroom. And I said, you need to go in that bathroom, stand in front of the mirror, and you spend some time, you talk to that person. You let them know what your issue is. Because that's where your answer's going to be. And, and you're talking to the person in the mirror. Yeah. You're not talking to somebody out there. No. Yeah. And that's it. Because life mirrors back to you what it is that you're holding in consciousness. And this, you know, we Ernest Holmes talks about the subjective trend of consciousness. And, and if you realize that you hold this on a subjective level, which is below the, the conscious level of consciousness, then, you know, you can start by owning who you are, where you're at. And when you do that, that empowers you to, I can make change. I don't need somebody out here. I can make change right now. You know, we, we talk in our movement, people have been in this for a long time, that, the, 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 like you said, life mirrors back to you. There, there's a huge population that doesn't believe that. Yeah. They, they were brought up that it, out there is doing it to me. Mm -hmm. the, the advantage of beginning to take responsibility for what's going on is that allows you to learn how to be in control of what's going on. As long as it's out there that's doing it, then all you can do is react out there. But when you begin to take responsibility that it's going on in here, that allows you to begin to say, maybe I can take control of the circumstances in my life. And that's where you can make the change yes. for you. All right. Well, we're going to be moving away now to our second break. So we'll continue this wonderful conversation when we get back. I'm Mike Briggs, owner and CEO at CentralValleyTalk.com. If you like talk radio, you'll love CentralValleyTalk.com. All local, all live, all the time, CentralValleyTalk.com. Have you seen a house for sale in the Tower District that you might like to own? It doesn't matter what realtor in town is selling it. If you like it, check it out at TowerDistrictProperties.com. Are you losing weight drinking coffee? Find out how Javita can change your life, help you lose weight, stay healthy, all while making money doing it. Call now, 246-4895. Hi, Priscilla Sanchez here. How would you like to be a guest on Chuck Leonard Central Valley Buzz? Give me a call or text, 559-203-0619. I'm Shelly at Horn Photo, and it's time to do more with your pictures. Get those images out of your camera, off your computer, and rescued from deep within your phone, and turn them into memorable photo keepsakes and gifts. Here at Horn Photo in Fresno, we have many wonderful photo items that we produce in-house, and we're here to help you find your individual style. So now's the time. Stop by Horn Photo in the Bellagio at Blackstone and Ease, or visit us online at hornphoto.com. To explore the possibilities. Ag is a vital part of the economy here in the Central Valley. Hi, I'm Ty Simpson, sales manager of the New Bland Solar Office here in Clovis. And if you're in the ag industry, you've probably given thought to solar. Whether you run a dairy, orchard, farm, or ranch at Bland Solar, we can custom design a system that's perfect for your business. The fact is that in this economy, replacing high cost utility power with solar power is a great way to improve your bottom line. Bland Solar looks forward to serving the residents of the Central Valley. So call us today at 554-5657. Bland Solar, the Valley's expert in solar. Hey, everybody, yeah. let's have some fun. Right. You only live once, and when you're dead, you're done. So let the good time roll. Let the good time roll. Watch Mike and Athena Fridays at 1 p.m. on CentralValleyTalk.com. For all of your real estate needs, call Mike Briggs Properties, 559 486 6758 or check us out at MikeBriggsProperties.com. Hi, I'm Mike Briggs from Mike Briggs Properties. We're in some very uncertain economic times. Many people have lost their homes. Many people face losing their homes now. Know your rights. Know your options. Come talk to the experts right here at Mike Briggs Properties. By the way, we'll talk to you for free. We do not charge any fees at Mike Briggs Properties. Call us at 486-6758. Mike Briggs Properties, 486-6758. CentralValleyTalk.com 
Well, welcome back to New Thought Talk. I am the Reverend Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in beautiful downtown Madera. My guest today is author lecturer Terry McBride. His book, The Hell I Can't, details his story from being injured through a just an incredible medical uh, history to discovering that, in fact, there were principles in the world that have been there since the beginning of time. And when he applied those principles, his life began to make a change. And during the break, Terry, we were talking ab about the idea of the past having control in our lives and, and what your, your and my personal opinion happens to be on that. Well, you had mentioned earlier that in the second piece that, uh, you know, we tend to allow our past to influence. And yeah. over and over, the great teachers have said, your past only has as much power as you give to it. That's right. I remember uh, Deepak Chopra's, uh, one of his early books, uh, The uh, uh, Aethis Mind, Timeless Body. Uh -huh. When he put that in there, he says, your past only has as much power as you give to it. And I'm, I'm reading it going, whoa, yeah. what a freeing uh, uh, concept that uh, I don't have to go spend my life dealing with my past. Right. I have the ability to to start right now and create my future. That's and, right. And, and and I think that's one of the challenges. In in this spiritual movement, we need to understand that where we acknowledge, especially in science of mind, that there are many paths to this ultimate finding the truth that we're a spiritual being, if you will. Right. What we forget sometimes is these paths are different. The the, the Christian model is start right where you are and create your future. It says, uh, you know, uh, and there are some of the other traditions that say what you're here to do is deal with your stuff. Because if you didn't have stuff, you wouldn't need to be here. And we need to understand that that we read a little of this philosophy, 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 <laughs> and we try and put them together, and they don't <laughs> always come together. They do this. I, You know, I know people like that, mm -hmm. that, that they take, you know, they... They dabble a little, we call them dabblers. They dabble a little here, and they dabble a little here, and they dabble a little here. And then they come into the center and they go, well, do you honor all faiths? And I said, well, yes, we honor all faiths, but we teach certain principles that you can apply. Well, but what about this, that, and the others? You, my advice, and it's been this way with people, is find, because there are many paths, you find what works for you that that will resonate will vibrate with you and then master it own it pick yes pick pick one discipline yeah and then stick with it and use it right because i, I i'm a firm believer i know people from all traditions mm -hmm. who have who if you will moved up to the into the realization about the wonder of life and and how they want to play it right but some of those people that i know who are in that that the wonder of life they don't have the same power I do. Mm -hmm. no, you know, and I know that sounds <gasps> egotistical, but oh. that's what we talk about. Science of mind over and over. Ernest Holmes says, Jesus walked on this planet as one having power and authority. And that what his teachings offer us is that we too can have power and authority. Of course, if you say that to other people who study other disciplines, they go, that sounds like ego to me. Well, yeah, but see, that also makes him the, if you, what you're saying, if we could have that, then that doesn't, he's no longer the exception. Yeah, but he's, then now you get into a whole, now he's uh, just uh, the I mean, example. You get into a whole different. But if he, he brought power to the world, or the, not, he didn't bring power, but he brought the, the ability to teach the manifestation of the power that's, that's already here, that's innate within each and every one of us because we were created, as you will, in the likeness and the image of the divine. That power is already there. He came and this is what he taught. If you take him and you set him over here as an exception, then, then you know, you've got a whole group of people over here that are going, well, 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 well. But if you say he is a great example, what he taught, and he taught that which I can do, you can do, and that much more. 
And and if you say that in some spiritual centers, they will say that you're being blasphemous. Yeah. So we need you, we need to understand that as we begin to explore some of these great spiritual principles that have been around for thousands of generations. Yes. What we run into is this this piece that we got from a child when we were a child, where our Sunday school teacher said, "Anybody who says that is you know that mm-hmm. kind of thing." Yeah. If but the but the human race is stepping up to owning some of the things that have been talked about for a long time. You said made in the image and likeness Mm -hmm. of God. There was a Hebrew scholar in the 13th century, Moses Ben Malman, who wrote a book called A Guide for the Perplexed. Mm -hmm. And he opens his book with... Now, he's a Hebrew scholar, scholar of the language. He's not a scholar of the dogma within Judaism, right. and I'm not making that wrong. All, mm-hmm. all tra- you, you, our tradition mm-hmm. has dogma. Right. And so what he says is, made in the image and likeness of God, the way it's used in the Old Testament doesn't mean a physical likeness. Right. It means an intellectual likenesses. And that's what they're getting at, that the mind of God is my mind. Right. That 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 this creative intelligence within me has a link to the divine creative intelligence. Well, you know, there's sometimes I like to get up in the morning and go, likeness to the image of God, and I stand in the mirror and go, he's got good taste, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, you know, it and it is not a physical presence that we're talking about. It is the spiritual mental being that we all truly are. You know, it's like people say, you know, we we are spiritual beings expressing ourselves in a physical expression or a mental being having a physical expression, however you want to understand it. But um, the thing is, having that understanding that the truth of who we are allows us to open up to a greater truth than to be restricted and confined by a three-dimensional world with three-dimensional rules that say, this is all there is. The, the first step in this is to begin to realize you need to find your own answers. Because where most of us grew up in, 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 in the spiritual arena was somebody up in front knew the answers, and if you didn't agree with them, then you were wrong, the Satan was leading you astray, or you were going to the hot place. And, and, and it can be challenging to, to make that shift to go, you know, I need to have a personal relationship with this infinite presence. Mm-hmm. I call it God. Yeah. I like that term a lot better than infinite intelligence. I like to be held by, but yeah. One of the key things is to begin to understand that you can have a personal relationship with this infinite, whatever you want to call that. And then again, as Steve says over and over and over is you need to begin to nurture that relationship. You need to practice it every day. And it may be the first few days or weeks or even months going, well, I, you just keep working at it, working at it, working at it. And what happens is over time you begin to go, oh, my gosh. That's right. And it is, it is an, ex- you don't understand it. It's an experiential experience is the only way I can put it, having that relationship. It's like trying to explain the color blue to a person that's blind from birth. You can talk about the sky, the, 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 the ocean, you know, the, the lovely shirt I got on. It doesn't make any sense. It's the same way when you begin to work on your personal expression and experience with that oneness that, that like Terry, I call God, and you begin to embody that. You begin to transcend your nor- what we'll, I'll refer to as your normal, everyday, three-dimensional consciousness, and you begin to move in a, into a different level of consciousness. It's, it's not an, it's something, an experience that we can explain and have somebody understand. It's an experience that they have to experience. You know, I mean, it's just, but when they do, and when you do, you know it. Well, and that's what I love about Ernest Holmes and his teachings is that he put together a whole system of classes. Yeah. And and it isn't you go take one class and you got it all figured out. You take one class on how to do affirmative prayer. Right. And he calls affirmative prayer or spiritual mind treatment. Take another class on how to go inside and begin to listen to yourself. You take another class on on uh, creative imagination, how to use your imagination. Mm-hmm. And what happens over time as people get a little of this piece and a little of this piece and a little of this piece, they begin to go, oh, this is how I'm going to use these principles together to begin to create a new beliefs for myself. Right. And I think 
uh, one of the challenges for people is is to understand this is an ongoing process. I have been uh, uh, really involved in taking, being in control of my mind for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I use it just as much today and have a spiritual discipline I use today and yesterday and the day before, just like I did 40 years ago. It isn't like all, I used it for two weeks and all of a sudden now I got it. Every day I use this. Every day I use this. Every day I use this. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think these various centers, and whether it's unity or science of mind or, or centers for spiritual living, they, they allow you to get involved in a community, a group of people where you sit down together, study these principles, and go home with homework, you apply it, then you come back the following week and talk about how did it work. And you build this, this resource so you begin to learn how, not only how to take charge of your creative mind, but how to do it in such a way so you not only affect what's going on inside of you, you can take control of the conditions in your life. Control of conditions in your life. Think about that. We're going to go to our next and final break, and we'll talk more about that when we come back. See you then. Uh, right here in the Tower District and all over the Central Valley, you'll see the Bobby Salazar signs everywhere. Let's bring in Bobby Salazar. Bobby! Hey, how are you? How's it going, man? Good. Real good to, real good to have you back on. Now, uh, a new sponsor of The Buzz, I want to thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, let's, well, I want to get right down to it. What'd you bring? Well, this is our famous uh, party tray. It's our variety tray, we call it, and it has just a little bit of everything. It has uh, little taquitos and burritos and quesadillas and guacamole. And it's one of the, the most popular ones that we sell. It's, uh, you can call in. We can have them ready in like 20 minutes to 30 minutes. You know how busy we are, but, you know, spur of the moment, this is a great deal to, to get for any party, any occasion. For the Super Bowl or any occasion, order a party tray from Bobby Salazar's. Hey Stan Gross of Horn Photo. Are you looking for a camera that takes better pictures than your phone? Why not give Horn Photo a shot? We can show you fantastic cameras from Nikon, Canon, Sony, and GoPro. Your time is valuable, so before you buy from Costco, Best Buy, or the internet, come see us. We've got great prices and deals, super knowledgeable staff, and we've been selling cameras in Fresno for 76 years. We're in the Bellagio at Blackstone and Knees, or go to hornphoto.com. Fresno's Camera Center. Solar energy is now more affordable than ever. Hi, I'm Ty Simpson, sales manager of the new Bland Solar office here in Clovis. And right now at Bland Solar, we're offering a program with zero down payment. That's right, zero money out of your pocket. This new program is affordable and easy with guaranteed production and no appraisals needed. In fact, your new system can be up and running in as little as four weeks. Bland Solar looks forward to serving the residents of the Central Valley. So call us today at 554-5657. Bland Solar, the Valley's expert in solar. Hi, my name is Bonnie, and I'm a show producer here at CentralValleyTalk.com. We have a lot of great shows that you can share your business with our viewers. I'd love for you to give me a call. My number is 559-289-9687. Are you losing weight drinking coffee? Find out how Javita can change your life, help you lose weight, stay healthy, all while making money doing it. Call now, 246-4895. For all of your real estate needs, call Mike Briggs Properties, 559-486-6758, or check us out at MikeBriggsProperties.com. Watch Tim Teeson live Wednesdays at 3 p.m. right here on CentralValleyTalk.com and on digital channel 33.2. If you missed the live broadcast, we're on every Wednesday night at 11 p.m. on Comcast channel 200 and digital channel 43.5. You don't want to miss this. CentralValleyTalk.com Well, welcome back to our last segment for today's show. My guest today is author and lecturer Terry McBride. It's been a what, you know, time goes by so darn quick. You know, it's just, but I am so glad to have had you on the show here. Now, we're going to talk about conditions, and then we're going to talk more about how to get a hold of you and your book and stuff. So let's... We ended up with uh, where I said we were addressing the possibility of taking control of the conditions in your life. And 
And what I learned early on is there are some great, wonderful, loving, caring teachers who do not believe that. When one of the stories in my book is I, they sent me to see this psychiatrist when I was in for the 14th or 15th surgery on my spine. And he kept reading these letters saying, you're, gonna, you're, you're probably going to spend your life in a wheelchair. You're going to have a colostomy the rest of your life. This is not curable, on and on. And finally I said, look, I'm reading these books. And these books say there's a part of me that's not sick. These books say there's a part of me that's not afraid. And what these books talk about is that if I can get in touch with that part of me, if I can begin to own that who I am is that spiritual being that's not sick and not afraid, these books say from there I can take charge of these conditions in my life. And this wonderful, loving, caring man sat back in his chair and folded his arms and he said, Who do you think you are? That's what you need to understand. As you study these principles, who are you studying with? Do they believe that you are a spiritual being and that you have the power and the authority to create your reality? Or do they believe that you're here to work off your karmic debt, you know, uh, do your sacred contract or some other thing that doesn't give you absolute choice? It just is a difference of opinion. This loving, caring psychiatrist had his opinion, and mm -hmm. I had mine. Who do you want to study with? And that's, that's it. You know, it's a very powerful but simple message. You know, do we want to step up and live our life in control of our life, or do we want to exist and let life happen to us? And it, and it really comes down to that. And, and, I mean, those two points are exactly what I think people are, are wrestling with. A hundred years ago in, 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 our, in the United States, if you'd have told people you have the ability to take control of your consciousness and take control of all the things that happen to you, they'd have looked at you like you're nuts. But what we have done in this last hundred years is move from just a few people who have studied these principles, mm -hmm. you know, in a monastery or, right. or up in the hills somewhere, to, to more of a general consensus. I mean, what science is proving today, Candace Pert in her book Molecules of Emotion, mm -hmm. Bruce Lipton in The Biology the of Belief, belief right. Norman Diage in The Brain That Changes Itself, mm -hmm. what they're saying is these are scientists proving that your consciousness, mm -hmm. the energy and feelings that run through your body communicate with your cells and, and determine what genes are turned on and what genes are turned, turned off. off. And it's through your consciousness. And there are still people in the scientific community that would read that and say, oh, bull, no, <laughs> it's not that way. Again, who do you want to study with? That's right. Do you want to just learn how to accept your limitations? Or would you like to have the possibility that you can step up to a new reality, begin to explore the truth about who you are, and then move forward to make your dreams come true? And, and that's the deal. You know, and that's the real deal. And that's the fellow that's sitting next to me. It's his life experience. Terry McBride, author of The Hell I Can't. Where can I get this book? You can get the book on Amazon. I mean, I, you know, I have it available when I'm at workshops. But the best thing is go to Amazon. You can buy a soft cover, you know, for 18 bucks, Or you can get a Kindle version for, I think it's under 9 I, 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 pre I prefer to have the book. I, do, I like that. I like to underline <laughs> it. it and, yeah, and stuff like and, that. But what you also, besides being an author, you, you lecture, you got stuff going on. Where, do, where can we find out about that? I've got a wonderful website, terrymcbride.net, and I'm thrilled about it because I'm, in the last couple months, I've been learning how to do it myself Yourself? instead of, you know, delegating uh -huh. it. There, is, there are free trainings on my website. There are free articles. There are free teleseminars that we have done. There's, there's a list of where I'm speaking. Usually I speak at Unity and Science of Mind Centers. Mm -hmm. I do s uh, some businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and what the whole site is about is, is what you're 
what your ministry is about, and that is get involved. Get involved. Don't just study this stuff. This is how you begin to use it. This is how you can apply it. I've got a program that's available uh, through the internet called Everybody Wins, which is a nine-week coaching program that is absolutely, I, I redid it last year. I listened to it all the way down <laughs> when I drove in from Sacramento right. and drove down. I listened to it, you know, because, mm -hmm. and as I'm driving down the road, I'm thinking, this is the <laughs> best training I've ever heard. <laughs> of course, it could be because it was my voice and my words, but get a system that allows you to begin to integrate the tools of choice. Mm -hmm. And what you will find out is you are more powerful than you ever imagined. And when you make your dreams come true, what you will find is a piece of yourself that's even bigger than your dreams. That can't be said any better than that. Terry, I want to thank you so much for being my guest in studio Thanks. today. I, I really appreciate it. You've been one of my heroes. It's wonderful to have you here in person, and, and I know this is going to be a long and wonderful friendship. And Me too, Thank Steve. you very thank much. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Well, you know, the time just, it flies. And, and they say that time is relative, and when you're doing something that you like, you know, it gets relatively shorter than, than you can ever imagine. And today was one of those days. What an incredible guest I had, and I want to encourage you to seek out his book. It is, it's just a, a fabulous book. I, like I said, I read it when I was in seminary. I've probably given a half a dozen, eight or ten books away to people uh, that have been working on, on their life expression, and it's made changes in their lives. As I know many other people that have read the book, it's made changes in their lives. And, you know, we found on our show here, because it's online for the most part, that the demographics of people watch are throughout the country and some even, even international. So I can't really send you to a center here in the Central Valley, but if you are here right in the Central Valley, we have several good centers here. We've got New Thought Community. We've got Central Valley Center for Spiritual Living. We've got the Center for Spiritual Living. We've got the Oneness Center. There's a Spiritual Awareness Center down in Visalia. And if you come over to Madera, there's a Spiritual Awareness Center out there. You can look them up online. You can find them. And I want to encourage you to show up at one of those centers because it will be life-changing. But if you happen to be in an area that's not nearby, there is a place that you can go online that's called findacenter.com. And, and they are an inclusive listing of all new thought centers that, around the world. If you happen to live in another country, just uh, put your cursor on the country you live on, you click it, and uh, you know the local breakdown, whether it's states or providences or whatever, will come up. And you can go there, and you can find a center that is nearest to you. Hopefully, it's within traveling distance. But if it's not, generally, there's contact information there, a phone number, address, or whatever, so that you can find somewhere near you where you can support your journey. And you say, well, you know, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere and, and bookstores and maybe I can't do Amazon right now. Well, I got something for you there too. You can go to this other link that is called newthoughtlibrary.com. And in newthoughtlibrary.com, you'll find a whole bunch of the early pioneers in New Thought. You'll, you, John Bascom, Ella Wheeler Wilcox, uh, Fenwick Holmes there. There's some Ernest Holmes stuff in there. There's uh, some of the, the uh, most all the Fillmore stuff in there. There's uh, uh, Ralph Waldo Trine. The list just goes on and on. All these different authors that are there that you can read online. These books are out of copyright, and they've taken the time to transpose them onto the Internet, so they're there for you to read. It's a powerful resource. You, you can, you know, it's just amazing. We can change the world, and we do it one person at a time. We do it within ourselves, and it's amazing as you work on yourself, as you begin to put these principles into practice in your life, you're going to be amazed at how the lives of those around you will change. It's just absolutely incredible. And finally, you can always go to my website is maderasac.com. We have a donate button there. You can, you can donate to help support this ministry. Um, there is a link, I believe, on the webpage if you're watching us live where you can donate to help support this ministry. And that's always a blessing to, to us, and it's a blessing to you too because it allows you to participate in creating and sending more good to the world. It's absolutely a wonderful program, a wonderful, when I say program, I'm not talking about the show here. I'm talking about the program of self-empowerment, and that's the gift for you. That's the gift that God 
God gave to the world. Jesus taught it. Ernest Holmes retaught it. And it's here today for you to experience and share. And so as I close today, my friends, as always, I want to say, may the light of God surround you. May the love of God enfold you. May the power of God protect you and the presence of God watch over you. Because truly, wherever you are, God is and all is well. Make it a great week. And I'll see you when I come back. I'm Mike Briggs, owner and CEO at CentralValleyTalk.com. If you like talk radio, you'll love CentralValleyTalk.com. All local, all live, all the time, CentralValleyTalk.com. Have you seen a house for sale in the Tower District that you might like to own? It doesn't matter what realtor in town is selling it. If you like it, check it out at TowerDistrictProperties.com. Are you losing weight drinking coffee? Find out how Javita can change your life, help you lose weight, stay healthy, all while making money doing it. Call now, 246-4895. Hi, Priscilla Sanchez here. How would you like to be a guest on Chuck Leonard Central Valley Buzz? Give me a call or text, 559-203-0619. Hello, I'm Shelly at Horn Photo, and it's time to do more with your pictures. Get those images out of your camera, off your computer, and rescued from deep within your phone, and turn them into memorable photo keepsakes and gifts. Here at Horn Photo in Fresno, we have many wonderful photo items that we produce in-house, and we're here to help you find your individual style. So now's the time. Stop by Horn Photo in the Bellagio at Blackstone and Ease, or visit us online at hornphoto.com to explore the possibilities. Ag is a vital part of the economy here in the Central, Central Valley. Valley Talk. 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 Talk.